Today, we're gonna to take a look at how to use the Canon Camera Connect app. This is an incredible app that allows you to connect your Canon camera to either the iPhone, iPad, Android device, or computer wirelessly. You can use the app to monitor your photos and videos on screen and preview your images as you take them. And it even allows you to make changes to most settings of your camera, including the ISO, aperture, shutter speed, and more. You can even download images and videos directly using the app without connecting your camera via cable or using the SD card to transfer the files. The app will work with any of the more recent models of the Canon DSLR and mirrorless cameras that are equipped with Bluetooth and or Wi-Fi connectivity, and it's free to download on both iOS and Android platforms. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the app on the iPhone XR, connecting it to my Canon EOS R. It can be connected via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and I'll show you how to set up using both methods. So once you've downloaded the app, turn your camera on, tap on it, and sit back and watch as I show you how to set up a wireless connection to the Canon Camera Connect app. Step one is to tap on the menu button on the back of the camera. Use the front dial just behind the shutter button to navigate to the fourth settings page, which is represented by a spanner icon and is colored in yellow. When you get there, there are six sub-menu options. Continue to use the dial to get to section five of this yellow section. As I mentioned earlier, if you have an EOS R, you'll see there are both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth options. If you wanna use Wi-Fi, tap on the Wi-Fi settings item at the top, then tap on disable to change to enable. And now you can go back one level by tapping on the menu icon on the left. And now we go down to the Wi-Fi function menu item, tap on that one, and we are now going to select OK. Give our device a name. By default, it will come up as the EOS R, which is fine. And tap on OK. And now we get to choose what we want to connect to. We can connect to a smartphone or tablet using the first option. We can connect to the EOS utility app on a computer. We can connect to a Wi-Fi printer or we can upload photos to a web service. For this example, I'm gonna to connect to my iPad. So I'll select the first option, tap on it. Then we select register a device for connection. And because it's an iPad, I'm going to select iOS. If you have an Android tablet or phone, of course you'd select Android. When you do this, a QR code will appear on screen which is essentially a link to download the software that I mentioned earlier. So by this stage, you probably already have that software. So you can tap on OK to skip past this section. Now it's going to create a Wi-Fi connection from the phone. Tap OK. Head over to the Canon Camera Connect app on your device. And then the Canon EOS R camera should appear in the app as an option. Select and you're now connected. So that's it, we're connected via Wi-Fi. Now let's have a look at how to connect via Bluetooth. Using the Bluetooth connection results in less communication delay between the camera and your phone. So if your camera has both options, choose Bluetooth as your preferred option, as this will result in better performance. To connect, go to the Bluetooth function, click on the smartphone option that appears, then click on pairing. Select whether you are going to connect to an Android device or iOS. A QR code appears on screen, which is a direct link to download the app, which by now you probably already have. So you can just skip past this step. Open your Canon app and then tap the Bluetooth icon on the top left of the app. A pop-up screen should appear and you'll see that a message also appears, EOS R pairing in progress. The EOS R should appear in the app or press scan if not, then you get a prompt to accept the pair request on both camera and app, confirm, and you're good to go. Okay, so now that you're connected, let's take a look at how the Canon Capture app works. At the top of the app, you'll see your connection data. If you've connected successfully, the top icon displays your camera name and confirms that you have connected. Just below that, you get a folder icon that allows you to view and transfer all your images and videos on your camera to your device. To do so, tap on the folder and a list of thumbnails appear. Tap on each thumbnail to preview in full and then the download icon 
at the bottom to download. When you do this for the first time, you'll get a pop-up screen asking if you want to download a reduced size version of the file or the original size image. Because I shoot in RAW, I tend to opt for the first option and download the reduced size JPEG, which will be around a megabyte or so, rather than the full 40 megabyte file size, which would very quickly fill up my iPhone storage. So go ahead and select which one you prefer. And if you wanna streamline the process, you can select the checkbox just above the OK button at the bottom of the pop-up to use these settings from now on. At the base of the screen, you'll notice some icons. The first one is info. If you tap on this, you can get some metadata for each image, showing you the file name, date, and time that the image was taken, shutter speed, aperture, exposure compensation, the ISO used, and even the file format being raw, JPEG. And for movies, you'll get the duration of the video, date and time, and movie format. The next icon is a star rating system that lets you rate your photos. Then after the download icon, a share button that lets you send the image to a printer. You can even use the trash can icon to the right to delete unwanted images from the card in your camera from within this app. The next option I wanted to look at is the auto transfer option. This is useful if you want to automatically download images taken when the camera is connected to your phone. Here you can set reduced image size or original and nominate whether you want to automatically include the location information or delete. The next is location information, which is where you can start logging the location that a photo is taken using the location information obtained from your smartphone. However, if checked, keep in mind, this will drain a great deal of power from your battery. For some cameras, you can choose to send location information back to the image on the SD card in your camera. The last option is camera settings. Here, you can get the camera to reflect the date and time of the smartphone. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the remote live view shooting mode, which is an incredibly useful tool that lets you use your smartphone or tablet to preview images and video as you're shooting and even allows you to change the controls on your camera. To do this, tap on the remote live view shooting icon. At the top, you can toggle between photo and video mode. Tap the cogwheel icon to the right to access some preferences. Here you can opt to show the AF focus button next to the shutter button on the interface, which is quite handy. And also you can select perform bulb shooting with a long tap, which means that the shutter stays open as you hold your finger on the shutter button. Good for long exposures, nighttime images, and so on. Below you'll see the image preview window. Tap anywhere in the window to focus on the subject on that point of the image, or use the AF button we just added to focus. When you're ready to take a photo, tap on the large circular shutter button. Below, you can change the shutter speed, exposure compensation, ISO, white balance, focus mode, shutter modes from single shot to continuous, or even a 10 and two second timer option is available. There is also a focus forward and back button option at the very end. If you switch over to video mode, the interface is much the same. You can preview your video in the window, tap to focus, record video and pause. You'll even see audio levels in the bottom left corner. Below that, once again, you'll get access to the shutter speed, aperture, ISO, white balance, autofocus modes. You can even change the video formats from 4K to 1080p, etc. Next along is the audio control where you can go from auto to manual and fine tune your levels with the slider. You can even enable or disable the wind filter or the attenuator, which can reduce noise in noisy environments. However, keep in mind when enabled, these can reduce the actual audio levels. So there you have it, a very powerful app that lets you gain full control of your camera remotely with your smartphone or tablet, opening up incredible versatility, especially if you're a YouTuber that needs to be both in front of the camera presenting and behind it controlling all of the settings. For still photography, it can be a great way to monitor images on a larger screen, which is awesome for still life and landscape or even portraiture, where you wanna show instant feedback to your models on a large screen that can be positioned away from the camera, giving you more space and freedom to go on about your shoot whilst your clients can preview your work as it's actually taking place.
Got to give full credit to Canon for this one for producing perhaps one of the best apps that I've come across yet for controlling your camera on a mobile device. It gives you access to just about every feature that you need to access on your camera in a very intuitive and easy to use interface right here on your phone or tablet. Hopefully you found this information useful. Certainly if you have any questions about what you've seen today, feel free to put your questions in the comments box below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.